Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters on the Elmer team. Today I'm talking about transfers between family members, specifically parent to child or grandparent to child. Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters. Thank you so much for watching my video blog. Today I'm talking about transfers between parents and children and grandparents and children. Also, it can apply for between children and parents. So I've run into a couple of situations recently where um, a parent transferred a property to a child before they passed away. Now, when that happens, there is some specific paperwork that needs to be filled out in order to um, exclude the property from additional taxes. So let's assume that I transfer a property to my friend and I bought that property back in 1990. Now obviously that property is a lot worth a lot more today than it was back in 1990. Now if I transfer that property to my friend, even if I only give it to him for a dollar, that friend is now going to be re reassessed at the new estimated value of the property, which is likely to be much more than it was back in 1990. Now, if this same scenario were to happen, and I was a parent transferring to my child, and I wanted to transfer this property to them, there is an exclusion that you can get. Or if a grandparent transferred to that same child, the exclusion here can be passed along to them and they can have the same tax base as you had back in 1990. So it's very important that if you do this kind of a transfer, that you get the proper paperwork filled out with the county assessor's office. This allows you to move that tax base over and really help keep those taxes lower and keep the property in the family. Now this is going to happen frequently where maybe somebody doesn't put a property into a trust and they just want to transfer the property over. Maybe they're at the end of life. Uh, you'll, you may have a parent or a grandparent who is at the end of their life and wants to transfer the property to a family member, allowing them to stay in the property till the end but transferring over without having to go through probate or anything like that if they don't have the money to be able to pay for a trust or if it doesn't make sense for them to make a trust. Now also a trust is a very good way in addition to go through the same effect with avoiding some costs and also avoiding some of those tax ramifications. So let's say that you did transfer that property before the person passed away and it wasn't their primary residence but the parent lived or grandparent lived for several more years that property then becomes income property and then when you if you go to sell it or anything like that then you are subject to capital gains tax so there are a lot of issues around it and the biggest takeaway from that I can say is if you're going to transfer property at all through the county please either call myself a tax or legal professional an attorney or a title officer and make sure that you understand all the different ramifications that can take place when you transfer that property so that you don't make a mistake and end up with a big tax bill at the end of the day. And if you have any other questions about this topic or any other real estate related questions, feel free to give me a call at 562-316-2915 or you can reach me at melinda at theelmerteam.com. Thanks so much for watching and please feel free to forward and share this with your friends.